Every night for the past few months, I've been driving the late night bus route through St. Paul. I picked up the job with the Metro Transit as a temporary gig, but it grew on me. My route started in the heart of downtown, past the calm expanses of the Oakland Cemetery on Jackson Street, and down to Regions Hospital on the edge of downtown. I've had my share of uneventful nights. But then, there was that one night, a night that changed everything. It was a chilly autumn evening. The wind rustled through the leaves, and a blanket of mist settled over the cemetery. The usual crowd boarded at the stops along the way, night shift workers heading home, a few late-night revelers, and the occasional solitary figure lost in their thoughts. As I approached the bus stop near the cemetery, I noticed a lone figure standing under the dim streetlight. Dressed in a long, flowing gown, with hair cascading down to her shoulders, she stood out against the bleak background of the tombstones. She looked up as the bus pulled in, her face pale and eyes hauntingly deep. Good evening, I greeted as she boarded. She nodded slightly, her lips barely parting. There was something ethereal about her, almost as if she didn't quite belong. She took a seat towards the back, away from the few other passengers. I continued the route, making the usual stops, but my eyes kept darting back to the woman in the gown. She sat perfectly still, staring out the window as if lost in another time. As we approached the empty airy public housing, I announced the upcoming stop. No one moved. The woman remained seated, her gaze fixed on the passing buildings. Next stop, Regent's Hospital, I announced. The bus was almost empty now, and the woman was the only passenger left. I glanced back at her through the rearview mirror. She hadn't moved an inch. This is the last stop, I called out, pulling into the hospital. She finally turned her head, her eyes meeting mine through the mirror. They were deep, filled with a sorrow I couldn't comprehend. She slowly rose and walked towards the door. Thank you, she whispered, her voice barely audible. She stepped off the bus and walked toward the hospital, her figure slowly dissolving into the misty night. As she disappeared into the fog, a strange sensation washed over me. Something about her presence lingered in the air, a chill that made my skin prickle. I closed the doors and began my drive back. But something compelled me to check the bus, just to be sure. As I walked down the aisle, I saw it. Lying on the seat where she had been sitting was a small, faded photograph. I picked it up, my heart pounding. It was a picture of a woman, strikingly similar to the one I had just dropped off, standing in front of a tombstone. The name on the grave was partially visible, Elizabeth, 1910-1935. A chill ran down my spine as I realized what had just happened. I drove back to the depot, my mind racing. Who was this woman, and why did she seem so familiar? I couldn't shake the feeling that I had been in the presence of something otherworldly. The next day, I requested a shift change. I couldn't face another night on that route, not knowing who, or what, I might encounter. Now, I drive the day routes, passing by the cemetery under the bright sunlight. But every time I pass that bus stop, I can't help but glance over, half expecting to see her standing there, waiting for a ride to the hospital. One day, curiosity got the better of me. I parked the bus at the depot and walked back to the cemetery. The sun was setting, casting long shadows over the graves. I wandered among the tombstones, searching for the one I had seen in the photograph. There it was, tucked away in a quiet corner of the cemetery. The grave of Elizabeth, 1910-1935. I stood there for a long time, trying to make sense of it all. Who was she? And why had she chosen to ride my bus that night? As I turned to leave, I felt a gentle breeze brush past me, almost like a whisper. I looked back, and for a fleeting moment, I thought I saw her standing there, smiling softly before fading into the twilight. Now, I drive the day routes with a new understanding. Sometimes, the past and present collide in ways we can't explain. And sometimes, the spirits of the departed have unfinished business, reaching out to us in their own way. Every time I pass the cemetery, 
I offer a silent greeting to Elizabeth, wherever she may be, 